Hi. Good morning. We're playing Final Fantasy. Se mm. Seven. Not to be confused with Mobius. No one plays Mobius. I know. Uh, so you have you ever played Final Fantasy Seven? I got into the overworld when it first came out and immediately just got lost. Huh. Yeah, that's a good, like, eight to ten hours in. Yeah. If you if you don't know what you're doing. When this come out, like, 1993? 97. Oh, 97. Yes, this is a 20th anniversary this year. So I would have been ten years old. Yeah, that's that's pretty much fucking I was probably well not probably, I was six when this came out. I probably didn't play it when I was six, or probably played it when I was seven or eight. But playing through it again, I don't know how I got far in this game at all. I didn't I didn't realize that seven year old me was this smart. Alright, so Final Fantasy VII, this is the PC version um, that they released a few years ago. Looks um, so crisp. It, it looks good. I mean, it's still... It's still, like, not great, but, I mean, it... They improved yeah. the... They improved the backgrounds, I guess, a little, and the textures a little. And they put mouths on everybody, because the original game, no one had a mouth. It was probably too, uh low resolution to even see the mouths. Well, the no, they, they didn't have mouths at all. Like, they oh. just only had eyes. I don't know why they added mouths, because they look terrible. Man, look at that frame rate. So, <laughs> this game is interesting. Um, I don't remember how fast the battles run at. Um, the game runs at a flat 30. Cutscenes run at 15. And the menus run at 60. So, um, if you notice, it was unbearably slow in that fight. So we just boost everything up to fast. Put the cursor on memory. And we'll probably leave it like that for the rest of the game. Uh, putting the cursor on memory makes it so when you're in battle it'll remember what the last thing you selected was, so you can just hold the circle button down. Oh and yeah. Just you don't even have to worry about it. Speedrun strats. That's not really speedrun strats, that's <laughs> lazy strats. So you get to name all of your characters in this one. You don't get to do that in some of the newer Final Fantasies. So they stopped doing that around Actually, I think with 12, they stopped. Didn't 12 have, like, uh, audio dialogue, or...? Uh, so 10 was the first game where they actually had voice acting, but they still uh. let you name your main character. Everyone else was uh, was pre-named. So, like, Yuna and Riku and uh, Waka and stuff, they all had their own set names. But you could still name Titus, which was the main character. And... It's neat being able to name your character, but when you have full voice acting, it kind of sucks. Because no one can ever refer to you by name. Like, hey! Get so over here! Persona uh, also lets you name your main character, and so they never actually refer to you by name, they always just refer to you as this guy, or hey you! So, since 
Maniac has never played this game. By the way, that's Maniac. Hi. Um... We're gonna see if we can keep this, this playthrough as spoiler-free as possible. That includes... characters and party members that we haven't met yet. So, right here, Barrett is kind of giving you an exposition as to what exactly you're doing here, and why we are doing it. Basically, these, uh, these Mako reactors are sucking the life out of the planet, and you are here to destroy it. So, we put Barrett in the back row, because anyone who's in the back row takes half damage, and would deal less damage um, if it weren't for the fact that Barrett has a gun. So it kind of benefits him to be in the back row. Ooh. And it's half physical damage. Uh, magic damage and stuff still applies if you're in the front or back row, it's all the same. Look at that mouth. You're yeah, permanently so surprised. That's Jessie, and she always has a open mouth. Uh, so all the main characters, all the all your party members, they seem to be fine in the mouth department, where usually their mouth is just like a straight line or like a little curvy line for a smile or whatever. But some of the some of the NPCs just have these big, wide open mouths and make them look like blow up dolls. I'm pretty sure uh, they'll eventually make a release, not make, but like release the, the remake that they've been trying to push on, like, what was it, the PS3? PS okay, so the PS3 had that tech demo that was basically just the opening sequence that we saw before, at the very beginning of this. Um, but that was basically just a tech demo, and they were like, no, we're not making Final Fantasy VII again. But then they actually finally, a couple of years ago, announced a remake of Final Fantasy VII. And they said, okay, we're making this. Um, it's going to be episodic. Every, every game is going to have a different uh, mechanic to it or something to it. But that's the last we've heard of it, basically. And they actually announced this year that they were bringing the remake back in-house, because like I say, I had a third-party publisher, not publisher, developer, working on it. Yeah, like, they... I think they already have all the models for what was the characters and shit done, because uh, in Mobius, uh, they have some Final Fantasy VII remake cards or some shit, and... Well, yeah, so they've got, they've got assets from the trailers that they showed, which I'm sure are probably just in-game assets. Yeah. So I'm sure... I'm sure a lot of what they have is is done, but there's still a lot to work on in a game besides just player models. Like recreating all the uh, environments mm -hmm. into like actual 3D instead of uh, pre-rendered. Which pre-rendered backgrounds back in the day made games look amazing on hardware that normally wouldn't be able to do this. You know, it'd be funny if they actually still had the uh, source files for these backgrounds and were just like, here, we're done. Oh, it would be amazing to, like, just have the, the background images on uncompressed and untiny. So, um... Going forward in later episodes, I cut out all of the footage of me saving the game. Because every time you go to save the game, it has to, like, ping their server. 
so sometimes it takes a little while, and I am saving in every single slot that I have available, so it takes a while for me to save sometimes, so I just cut them all out. It's also where, uh, if I'm in the middle of recording and I want to take a break, or use the bathroom, or something, save points are a good spot for that. I just realized my car is as old as this game. Alright, cool. So this random encounter was actually slightly beneficial in that I got Barrett's Limit Break all the way up right before the boss fight that's coming up. Ooh, Materia. I think it's more because um, you have two hands and Barrett only has one. I don't think Barrett could do it himself. The mobile game, Mobius Final Fantasy, they actually had a whole Final Fantasy VII Remake event, and in part of it, you had to fight a lot of Guard Scorpions. And, uh, there's a little mechanic probably not on right now, or is it doing it right now? No. no. So, one of the things that Guard Scorpion does is when he raises his tail, um, he will counterattack any attack that you make against him. And it does quite a bit of damage to both Cloud and Barret. I'm going to keep attacking him anyway, because I want to get my Limit Break gauge up as much as possible, because the way Limit Breaks work is each party member has four levels of Limit Breaks, and each level, except for level four, has two Limit Breaks to learn. Each party member starts with their first level one Limit Break, and using that first Limit Break in battle a specific number of times is what unlocks the second Limit Break for that level. Uh, then the next level of Limit Breaks unlocks after defeating a certain number of enemies. So for Cloud, his first Limit Break, Braver, has to be used eight times before he unlocks his second level one Limit Break. Then to unlock the next level of Limit Breaks, Cloud has to defeat 120 enemies, uh, so it is possible to unlock the next level of Limit Breaks before actually unlocking both Limit Breaks in a level. And then the, the level 4 limit breaks um, are only available to learn through these manuals that you find throughout the game. So you have to actually seek out those limit breaks if you want to learn them. Yeah, in Mobius there's actually just no way to not attack them, so... So one of the interesting little additions that they added to this uh, this re-release, I almost said remake, um, on the PC is they added this save boost feature, which I believe gives you about 10 million gil, um, and it increases the HP and MP on your characters to the maximum, which is 9999 for HP and I think 999 for MP. The problem with that is that... Um, Limit breaks basically break. Oh, yeah. So every character fills their limit break bar at different rates, 
and each limit break level has its own charging speed. Um, the limit bar will fill based on how much damage is received in relation to a party member's max HP at the time. So Cloud's level 1 limit break requires that he takes 46.5% of whatever his max HP is to fill the bar up. That means that if you set everyone's health to 9999 with a save boost, um, Cloud is going to have to take about 4600 damage before his limit gauge fills up all the way. And with these enemies only doing in the single and double digits, um, it's going to take a long time for his bar to fill up. Poor Cloud. So right here we have to save Jessie, who has managed to get her foot stuck uh, in this beam here, even though she was standing still for the entire time. Uh, if you don't save her, then you have to come back and get her, because you can't actually continue without her. So, this timer that's going right now for the bomb never actually stops, unless you've, um, like, pause, pause the game. So even in the menus, uh, the timer won't stop. So anything that will completely stop the game clock altogether will stop that timer. So actually tabbing out of the game will pause the timer. Which is rather interesting because you can tab out of the game to stop the game clock. So I do it sometimes at save points when I like need to go away. Uh, I'll just stay on the menu and tab out of the game so the game clock won't go up. But the music keeps playing. Which is neat, I guess, or interesting. It'll make your poop sound um, epic. Yes. And dangerous. Because I'm playing in the bathroom. Or, you know, you have, like, you know, speakers or something loud enough that they reach the bathroom. Some or quality you, uh, speakers. Yeah, some quality speakers. Or, or you take your phone and remote play or some shit. And there goes a reactor. One of many. So, I don't think I mentioned Biggs and Wedge, but that's Wedge running around with his pants on fire right there. And Biggs is the skinny guy with the headband. The red headband. Oh shit, they're both red. God damn it. He's the dude. <laughs> Which one's the dude? Uh... And it's the one without the blow's mouth. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, um... We've blown up the reactor and we've left. Um, everyone's freaking out because the reactor just exploded and they knocked that girl over. It's kind of rude. So, this is a flower girl and we're going to be buying a flower from her. And we're doing that because of um, a mechanic later on in the game. Or a mechanic that actually runs through the entire game until later. So, a number of hours into the game, we go to a place called the Gold Saucer. And at the Gold Saucer, one of four potential party members will take Cloud on a date. 
and mm. there is a hidden affection value in the game and each of the four potential party members has an initial value which is set at the very beginning of the game. Those values are 50, 30, 10, and 0. And um, I'll make mention of each party member that has an affection value as they join the party. Uh, speaking of, the party member that starts at 0 affection is Barrett. Can you actually have Barrett take you on a date? It's kind of hard to do, but yes. Wow. <laughs> um, so, affection get values go up or down based on the dialogue choices that Cloud makes, and sometimes just by having that party member in your party at a specific time. And to get Barrett to be the one that shows up to take you on the date, you have to be an asshole to everybody but Barrett. So, right here, as these guards are all converging on you, you can skip these fights, um, but I just want the extra experience and the extra limit gauge, so... So Cloud is surrounded by guards, and uh, he's just going to jump onto this very tiny train. There was actually a video from Kotaku a little while back um, comparing the English localization of the game to the original Japanese language script. And in this particular scene here where Biggs wonders if Cloud may have been killed, in Japanese, Barrett basically responds with something like, uh, you know, that jerk wouldn't disappear without getting his money. Um, which suggests that Barrett sees Cloud as someone who's, you know, only there to get paid. While at the same time, he's the kind of person who would deny that Cloud could be dead, and instead he insists that, you know, he wouldn't disappear without getting his money. Um, in English, he just kind of says, No way! with two exclamation points. So, uh, there's a little loss in translation there with Barrett, and... It, overall, I think Barrett's depicted as a much cooler and slightly calmer kind of guy in Japanese compared to his Mr. T persona in this. Um, yeah, the, the video is pretty neat, so I'll link that down in that thing down there.
Sorry, I was giving a frosty in for trading in uh, my time for bringing groceries, so I think it was worth it. I would say so. So this is kind of a neat little thing where Jesse shows you a very poorly done wireframe model of Midgar and explains to you exactly how this whole monstrosity is constructed. I don't think that that realistically this place could ever exist because it's basically a bunch of plates sitting on top of pillars with a city on it and then the slums are all underneath the plates. So it's a city on top of a city, I guess, or a city on top of a slum. Like, um, I guess how the lore of Batman went is they built Gotham over old Gotham. Except no one lived in old Gotham, except uh, maybe kill a croc? I don't know. Someone will post about it. There's actually, um, in um was it the first new deus ex game which one was human revolution that was the first one yeah wait like like originally the first or the remake wait you the, just said the, the remake like the ones with adam jensen it yeah, okay, I think that was the first one. Yeah, um, Human and, Revolution and then Mankind Divided. In that one, when he goes to China, there is a city, I don't remember the name of the city, that had the same dual-layered thing as uh, Midgar does, which, I don't know, that game was published by Square Enix. So what the hell was Wedge doing to the to the wall? earlier, or was he trying to drive the train? Or was he just freaking out? He might just be freaking out. This happens a lot with their eyes. Um, that you can see on Wedge right now. Only one of his eyes is blinking. And whenever the eye blinks, the mouth closes as well. And it's kind of... Oh. I, it happens a lot, I've noticed. I don't know if it's like a, a glitch or intentional or whatever, but it happens a whole lot. I thought it was his eyes Z fighting with his face. So, we see more uh, poorly proportioned trains here. Yeah, man. Barrett would be like the entire door, like, well, more than a door. Yeah. It's huge. So, um, I actually didn't mention this yet, but you notice there's a little, a little finger over my head. Um, so when you hit select on the controller, it puts a little, that little cursor over Cloud's head, and then it also points. Uh, puts those little red markers on any exits or entrances or whatever to a, to one of these uh, fields. Is that always there? No, you can toggle it on and off, and it'll sometimes just always be off in an area. But it's incredibly useful to have because some of the zones, it's hard to see where an entrance and an exit is and where cloud Someone is. Like that one? Mm -hmm. It's like, do I go up or down? Well, you can go up. Actually, if you go up, 
um, you can talk to a guy and he'll, it'll kind of give you like an image of one of the pillars that holds up the plates above. So this is interesting information. I never really talked to this person, but they tell you that when you set off that bomb, a lot of people died. In the slums? Yeah. So you blew up that that reactor, and presumably there was a lot of uh, debris that flew around. And I'm assuming that a lot of people died from the explosion, the shockwave, the debris. But, I mean, you are terrorists, so... So this is Marlene, uh, and you are, you are not Papa. This is uh, one of your party members. You don't get her yet. Her name is Tifa. Um, and she is one of the characters that you can potentially get a date from. And I'll keep track of that. Um, so right off the bat, we have to get her from 30 past uh, 50. And to start off, we just give her a flower and we get five points. Now these values are hidden in the game, but um, they're really easy to find if you just use like a memory scanner. So now that you're back at Tifa's bar, everyone is just eating a lot, especially Wedge. Look at him go. Food's so good, you're really pulley. Food's so good, the top half of his body is not actually attached to the bottom half, if you notice. Well, yeah, that's more of a limitation of the graphics back then, but yeah. Yeah, like any of the more round characters, um, whenever they bend, you can kind of see that the top half is not securely attached. So uh, to progress here, you have to actually try and leave, and then Barrett shows up. And then you go down into their poorly hidden hideout, which is underneath that pinball machine. And there is like a six inch gap around the pinball machine. I thought that was a really bad carpet. Oh, oh. I'm just gonna jump down like that. All right. A lot of jumping. Except for you, you walk down. Oh, first I talk to Tifa. Remember, we're getting as many affection points as we can, so we have to ask Tifa for something hard. It's a pretty good channel she's watching there. It was probably uh, a station underneath the reactor you blew up, and now it's just on a test signal. Are you saying we blew up a TV station? Probably. Probably did. Cloud's kind of an asshole. He was kind of hired on to Avalanche uh, as like a mercenary and so he doesn't really care about anyone. Wait. 
she looked up how to make a bomb on a computer. Anarchy were easier times back in the day. It's like trying to learn how to make math from 4chan. Or Payday 2 and just makes you make... Was it salt water? That was, that's what I was getting at. <laughs> Payday 2. <laughs> he tries to... Tries to tell you how to make meth. He's probably just asking a bunch of people on the internet. What do I do next, guys? Uh... Slur sodium chloride. Go. Whoa. Jesus. Knocked him off the, the frame. I like that they always refer to Shinra as the Shinra. Not to be confused with the cloud. You, know, you talk to Jesse here, and she seems very distraught that all you care about is money. By the way, Shinra is a power company. But they seem to run this whole planet. As soon as you try to leave, of course, Tifa shows up and tries to talk you out of it. Seven years ago is a long time. So, seven years ago, uh, they kind of go into like a little bit of the background here about Tifa and Cloud's relationship and that they were childhood friends. And So, Cloud is 21. So, seven years ago, he would have been, what, 14? Yep. Hair spikier? Oh, Cloud's not gonna find a job. He's gonna join Shinra's military and be be a soldier. Oh, look at that ponytail. That is a nice ponytail. Yeah, so technically it is spikier since he doesn't have a ponytail when he's grown up. So Cloud wants to be just like Sephiroth. The great Sephiroth. So Soldier is Shinra's uh, elite military force, I guess. Cloud wants to be one of them. Uh-huh. Tifa thinks it's hilarious.
Um, so, Cloud gets paid his 1500 gil for blowing up a reactor and killing dozens of people. And getting money seems to be his his trigger for wanting more money. So he decides he's going to help out and stay should Barrett pay him 3,000 gil. Uh, uh. And then I guess we settle on 2,000. Which is fine, you know. So... We're going to take a little nap here, and uh, we'll pick up next time on Dragon Ball Z. This isn't Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> if it were Dragon Ball Z, every time I die, I'd get more and more power, though. Cloud does have spiky hair, just like Goku. Maybe it is Dragon Ball Z. Hmm. I mean, he does fight and get stronger every time. I think that's just because it's an RPG. <laughs> Alright, that's it. We'll, we'll be back night. next time. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Score.